Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 50 years on television. Sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger. Welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. The program you're about to see, called Time, was taped in 1967 and features guest star Charlie Pride. On this show, we'll see the beautiful Natalie Nevin singing Love's Old Sweet Song, Joanne Castle swinging it up with Silly Jilly, and Arthur Duncan tapping away to stop time. At the end of this program, I have a very special visit with Welk star Joanne Castle, who provides us with some fascinating stories about how she began her multi-talented career before she joined the Lawrence Welk Show. So stay with us. And now, here's the maestro himself, Lawrence Welk. Friends, it's time to bring you greetings from all of the champagne music makers. We're getting ready for daylight saving time, so part of our show this evening is about time. And now I think it's about time we got things rolling. Large for the shelf, so it stood 90 years on the floor. That was taller by far than the old man himself, though it weighed not a single pound more. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born, and was always his treasure and pride. But it stopped short, never to go again when the clock ahead tonight. Uh, here's some dance music for our studio audience as well as you folks at home. Frank Scott is featured at the piano along with the rest of the champagne music makers. Our recording arrangement of Slowpoke.
passing of time seems to have no effect on lovely Norma Simmer, except to make her look and sing even better than ever. Let's listen to this lovely and wonderful lady. For new talent, and some of our people recommended this next young man. We think you will enjoy our special guest this evening, a gentleman who really knows how to sing country songs, Charlie Pride. Let's give him a nice welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Well. Last year, up in Great Falls, Montana, I had the good fortune of meeting most of the cast here on the Lawrence Welk Show, and we had a wonderful time, and I'm happy to be back here with them again tonight. And thank you for having me on the show, Mr. Well. And right now, I would like to introduce someone who's very special to me. In my opinion, one of the great fine musicians in Nashville, Mr. Lloyd Green and his steel guitar. How about that? Between you and me, you're too much to forgive. Just 
between you and me I'm not so sure about it Cause just between you and me You're too much to forget You're too much to Wasn't that nice? Charlie Pride and Lloyd Green from Nashville, Tennessee, where so much of our good country music comes from. It's a pleasure to have you with us, and we'll hear more from you later in the show. We always receive nice comments on this next feature. We have a pleasant instrumental duet featuring Charlotte, the attractive young lady who plays the cello, and Bob Rothson at the piano. The song, Easy to Love. a wonderful song I'm sure all you folks remember. Natalie Nevin sings Love's Old Sweet Song, Frank Scott at the harpsichord. Once in the dear dead days beyond recall When on the world the mists began to fall Out of the dream that rose in happy throng. Lo, to our hearts, love sang an old sweet song. And in the dusk, where fell the firelight's gleam, softly it wove itself into Dude. 
beautiful. Natalie, very beautiful. Thank you, Frank Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, it's surprising the many nice little things our fans do for us. Recently, in honor of my birthday, the one and only grocery store in my hometown, Strasburg, North Dakota, put on a special sale. And of course, the folks sent me the newspaper clipping. The special swore corn and ham. I think they were really trying to tell me something. Now we take you to the bigger town of Portland, Indiana, where they have a supermarket, the Emerald Brothers Supermarket. Hey, everybody, come around, come around. Today we got the biggest special. Everything a half a price, right? Right, Papa. <laughs> and what's the reason for the biggest special? To find my pretty young daughter, a nice young man to marry, right? Right, Papa. Uh, but the boss, uh, what's the putting on a special got to do with your daughter getting a husband? My stupid. Uh, the reason that most men don't get married today is because of the expense. Ma, with everything a half a price, ah! Here comes a customer now, and uh, he's a bachelor. Go on, Joanne. Help him. Today's our big special. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Potatoes are cheaper. Tomatoes are cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker have their price a downward shove. Grab yourself someone to fry your eggs and bacon. She can live just like a queen on what you're making. You'll find a marriage is cheaper, a carriage is cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. Hey, balonas are cheaper. Kimonas are cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. Bananas are bargains and apples are bargains. You should take advantage of. You can pay a little, pay a little, maybe. You can even start to think about a baby. You'll find the bits are much cheaper, and cribs are much cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. Potatoes are cheaper, tomatoes are cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker gave the price a downward shove. Someone to fry your eggs, eggs and bacon. She can live just like a queen on what you're making. You'll find a marriage is cheaper, a carriage is cheaper. Now's the time to fall. Now's the time to fall. Now's the time to fall in love. Hey, that's a one buck. Ma, for you, only 50 cents. Oh, Papa, no trading stamps? Ah, no oh. trading stamps? Ma, oh, forget Papa, it. Papa, don't let him go, Papa. Ah, he's, he's a no good. He's a no good. He's a cheap escape. I Thank you, Joanne, Bob Lito, and fellas. I might tell you, folks, that Jack Amell used to work in his father's grocery store in Portland, Indiana. Well, so much for the entertainment from the grocery store. Let's call on Steve Smith for a song that's quite appropriate for daylight time. Time on my hands, you in my arms, nothing but love. If you fall Once and for all I'll see my dreams Come true Moments to spare For someone you care for One love affair Mm -hmm. Time on my hands And you in my arms And love in my heart For you Love in my heart For you
I sure want to tell you how much I enjoy working with such a nice bunch of fellas. You know, every now and then we have a problem finding an appropriate song for a particular show. And when that happens, one of the fellas ends up writing something. Well, that's the case this evening. Kurt Ramsey wrote a very danceable song called Stop Time. Fellas, are you ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Again on the lovely Leonard sisters, the girls have a new recording of one of this year's Academy Award nominees. I know you will enjoy their version of Georgie Girl. Hey there, Georgie Girl, swinging down the street so fancy free. Nobody you meet could ever see the loneliness there inside you. Hey there. Why do all the boys just pass you by? Could it be you just don't try? Or is it the clothes you wear? You're always window shopping but never stopping to buy. So shed those dowdy feathers and fly. A little bit, hey there, Georgie girl. There's another Georgie deep inside. Bring out all the love you hide And oh, what a change there'd be The world would see A new Georgie girl Georgia Girl is one of the songs on the Lennon Sisters' new album. Let's listen to the fine tenor voice of Joe Feeney. Joe sings a well-known ballad, The World Is Mine Tonight, Frank Scott at the piano. The world is mine tonight And mine each silver star That shines above in the blue This hour of heart's delight The world is mine And every flower that blossoms anew You're mine and mine alone To lips that speak of love and to eyes that are bright So in my heart I know This world divine is mine
Great job, Joe and Frank. Several of the songs in Joanne Castle's new album recapture the flavor and the happy sound of the Roaring Twenties. Now here is Joanne to give us a sample, a very wonderful, a very happy new song titled Silly Jilly. I love the beautiful harmonies of the Lennon sisters, especially when they sing Georgie Girl. Be sure to stay with us for a fascinating visit with the famous ragtime and boogie-woogie piano player, Joanne Castle, at the end of our program. And now, back to the show. It's encore time for our talented guests, Charlie Pride and Lloyd Green. Fellas, you're on. Thank you. I would like to do a number, one of Hank Williams' great numbers, called Love Sick Blues. Holy She called me sweet and daddy Such a beautiful dream I get to think it all over I lost my heart it seems I've grown so used to you somehow Oh well I'm nobody Sure go daddy now And I'm lonesome I got the love sick blue Well I'm in love Feeling called a blues Oh Lord, since my baby said goodbye Oh Lord, I don't know what I do All I do is sit and sigh Oh Lord, that last long day She said goodbye Oh Lord, I thought I would cry She do me, she do you She got the kind of love it. Oh Lord, I love to hear her when 
when she called me sweet and I, 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 such a beautiful dream. I get to think it all over. I lost my heart, it seems. I've grown so used to you somehow. Well, I'm nobody sugar daddy now, and I'm lonesome. I got the love sick blue. Charlie, it was good to have you on our show. Come back and see us real soon again. It's always a pleasure to be able to record good songs. We'd like to play for you at this time one of the pretty selections from our new album, Hits of Our Time. The song, and we were lovers, from the picture, The Sand Pebbles. a fine Pete King arrangement, and our compliments to our producer director, Jim Hobson, lighting director, Chuck Crone, and cameraman, Herm Fogg, who photographed that number on one camera. Not long ago, we had the pleasure of hearing again that great Count Basie Orchestra, one of the finest swing bands of all time, one of my very favorite bands, would like to play one of the tunes he made so famous, the one o'clock jump.
But Fred Meyer and Florin has a number that fits nicely on the show. We also feature the great talents of Jack Emmel. Jack is a tremendous musician. Here is Jack, assisted by Myron Florin, playing the Tick Tock Polka. One, two, and. Jack had to study music for years to be able to do that. And to think I have to pay him double scale for beating on those blocks. playing all three of those blocks. Don't overdo it, Jack. This is Myron's number. And oh, by the way, Myron, thank you for the help. <laughs> Time for a very popular feature of our show, a duet by lovely Norma Simmer and Jimmy Roberts. Here they are with one of the loveliest of all island songs, Now is the Hour. Gentlemen, our time is growing short. We only have about five minutes more. But please don't set your watches by that. It's only a song cue. Give me five minutes more. Only five minutes more. Let me stay, let me stay in your arms. Here am I begging for only five minutes more. Only five minutes more. Five minutes more. 
five minutes more. We'll be seeing you next week at the same time. And until then, stay happy, keep a song in your heart. Good night. We hope you've enjoyed our show all about time. And right now it's time for you to meet our special guest. We've watched her sing and dance and play the accordion. And Lawrence Welk always called her the queen of the honky-tonk, ragtime, and boogie-woogie piano. That could only be Joanne Castle. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. How you doing, Mary Lou? Good to have you here. Well, it's a pleasure. Does this show bring back some memories for you? Oh, a lot of memories, a lot of memories, especially the things when we used to do together. Um, so doing the same thing every week, playing the piano is great, don't get me wrong, but when I got to do things with the other cast members, I, I, had, I had more fun. It was like, you know, we were like kids yeah. doing something together, even though it was kind of rehearsed, but I loved that. That was my favorite part of working on the Lawrence Welk Show. Now, you, were, you grew up in Bakersfield. Bakersfield, California. I lived in Ventura, California. And when I was 13 years old, I knew I wanted to be in show business. So we just continued south, and we went to Los Angeles. Now, your mom was a Harvey girl. She was, a, yes, she was. That's where she met my father. He was a railroad man, and uh, he was a brakeman first, then a conductor. And they met on the train. He ran across her, and, and she was eating popcorn, and he bumped into her, and he picked up her popcorn, and that was it. <laughs> that sounds like a Judy Garland movie. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you happen to start playing? Well, when I was three years old, we started with the singing and dancing. And she was starting a studio, so she started me with the singing and dancing. And I used to get in the morning, get up in the morning at 6 a.m., and they tell me I used to bang on the piano and wake them up. And my father turned to my mother one morning and said, we've got to get that girl lessons. <laughs> so you did. So we did. So that was classical music. That was classical music. There was a teacher who also lived around the corner who taught music. So I just had to walk across, the, just around the corner, and I started with my piano lessons. So then where did the accordion come into it? Well, um, there was a man who also, <laughs> when we moved to Ventura, California, he started a studio there, and my parents thought it'd be nice if I played the accordion because uh, with the accordion, um, I could do move around more. The piano, it's stationary. So I started with the accordion, and in two weeks I was playing. I mean, if you play the piano, you can just about play any instrument. I want to tell that to everybody out there, especially youngsters, because if you start with the piano and you want to play something else later, it's so much easier to start with the piano. Now, you told me your dad brought home the maple leaf rag. Yes, yes, he did. He brought home the music, and he insisted I learn it. And I thought it was very tough, and it was hard. It's one of the hardest. It's one of the hardest, and I was 12, 13 years old, and he used to come home, and he would insist I play it for him. So if I didn't get any better within four bars, he knew it, because he played cornet in junior high school. So he knew music. So I finally learned it, and I thought, oh, goodness, he'll get off my back. <laughs> And so, so as soon as I finished learning that song, he brought home the dill pickle rag. And he started bringing home all these rags. And <laughs> so did you like ragtime? Uh, yeah, I did, because uh, the classical was all I was playing. And then I started playing boogie woogie. And uh, people like to hear a novelty, so I play ragtime. And especially for people his age and older, they thought, like, you know, 13-year-old playing ragtime was very unusual. Sure. Yeah. Now, were you really working in Las Vegas at 17 years old? Yes. I looked much older. My mother made my costumes, and uh, I get, had an agent, and I got a, a quartet, with, uh, three other men, four men, excuse me, a quartet, and uh, we played the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas and the Fremont Hotel. The first time I played was Fremont, and I worked opposite Wayne Newton, and he and I, we worked till four in the morning, and we had to do six shows a day. We started actually at four o'clock in the afternoon, and the last show was at 4 a.m., that's a long day. Long day, especially I didn't drive. My mother would pick me up, and we went as sisters. So they'd think I was older, so I had to learn to call her by her first name. <laughs> <laughs> so I was calling my mother Dotsie for years. <laughs> now, how did you happen to meet Lawrence Welk the first well, time? The first time, he came to Los... I'm sorry, he came to Ventura, California. He was on local television there for four years in L.A., and his very first 
appearance with the band and everyone was in Ventura and he and Myron Florn and uh, then it was Roberta Lynn, the sure. champagne lady. They all came to Ventura and we snuck ourselves backstage, my parents and I, and we got to meet. I met Lawrence and I met Myron and I met Ro Roberta Lynn and the very next day Myron asked me to go to a music store where he'd be signing autographs. So we naturally said we'll see you there and my mother brought the camera and I took a picture with, with Myron and he absolutely remembered remembers it constantly. He remembered it all these years. And of course, now of course we know we've lost Mr. Myron Florin, the great legend on the accordion. But when I was taking this picture, I, the, I, the best part about it is I'm as tall as he is at 12. <laughs> 12 years old. And my flat shoes, I'm as tall as he is, yes. Now, I read that Joe Feeney had something to do with you getting on the show. Oh yes, I didn't know this till I met Joe Feeney and got on the show, but, but what we sent my first album I ever made, I was 18 on the accordion, and that was sent as like as an audition, and my picture was on, on the front, because I looked 35 years old then, <laughs> but I was only 18 when this picture was taken. We sent it to Lawrence Welk, and I understand that Joe Feeney did the auditioning, and th those that he heard that weren't that good, he would put aside, and those that were good, he thought Lawrence should hear, he would take to Lawrence Welk. Well, so he, he took, was the screener. He screened, my, he screened my record and said I was just one of those that, uh, that he picked, and I, so he throws it up to me all the time that <laughs> without me, you would have never made the Lawrence Welk show. So did that put you on the show? Put me on the show. I didn't have to make an audition. That was my audition. But, the, but really, I found out the reason I went on the Lawrence Welk show was because someone said she also plays honky-tonk and ragtime piano because I was doing a local television show at the same time and I was playing honky-tonk piano. And so uh, that's how I got on the show, not just because of the accordion, because Myron was already there. Sure. So when I went on, I did a, uh, a duet with, with uh, Big Tiny Little. And we and both, you both sat on, on the, the same, same bench. bench. <laughs> of course, in those days, we both fit on the <laughs> same bench. Today, it would never work. <laughs> now, it was interesting that Charlie Pride was the special guest on this program. You discovered him long before. Yes, we, uh, we were on the road, the Lawrence Welk Show, and uh, we, when we had time, a lot of times, we were there five days at the State Fair in Great Falls, Montana. So Joe Feeney, Jack Emmel, and I, we decided to go to this big country western place, and we heard there was this singer there that's standing out. They didn't tell us who it was. So we went there, and comes on stage is Charlie Pride, and it was very unusual in the early 60s to see a black man with a cowboy hat singing sure. country tunes and he sang great he had a great personality and we said yes this would be great on the lawrence welk show lawrence welk is looking for something like this somebody different so jack emble was the associate producer at the time so we took it upon telling you know jack you got to tell lawrence and jack did and next thing you know he was in california and he did special guests on the lawrence welk show he had people look in they did they signed him to a contract and the rest is history your 20th birthday was a very special event for you. <laughs> well, I was on the Lawrence Walk Show on a week-to-week -week basis, and I guess everybody had that sort of thing. It was called auditioning, but you're on television to see how the public likes you. And all he had was, all he had was the Lennon sisters, and um, and Alice Lawn had just quit, and so there was no Champagne Lady. So I was a little bit different. So he wanted to see how I'd go over. So I was on on the fourth week. Lawrence Welk came to me and he said, just before I went on the air, he said, I'd like to mention how old you are. He said, and tell the people you're 19 years old because this is unusual. I said, oh, you can't do that. And he said, why? I said, because if you announce that I'm 19, I said, and, I, and you don't hire me, I said, <laughs> I have to go back to doing what I do. And I play a lot of nightclubs around the country and you have to be 21 to do that. My mother and I would travel and we had fake ID and all that, but it was a great experience, I'm telling you now. Because, but anyway, I, I said, if you don't harm me, I, 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 and he looked at me really strange and I thought, oh, oh that's it, I'm not gonna, you know. Well, the following week was my 20th birthday and I went on the show, did my number, 
When I turned around to smile at the crowd, you know, the audience and the camera, Lawrence Welk came out with this huge birthday cake with the honky-tonk piano right on the icing. And the whole band, they sang happy birthday. And I just started crying because it was, you know, and I'm on television, I'm saying to myself, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be an adult here. I'm crying in front of all these men musicians, you know, and I'm 20, I should be an adult. And it was half like trying to hold my tears back and crying, and he hired me right on the air, and it was so wonderful. I really, really wanted to be on the Lawrence Welk show since I was 12 years old. So that was a dream come true for Dream you. come true. I used to lie in bed, seeing myself being announced by Lawrence Welk. But I didn't know how it was going to work out because he had Myron Florin on the accordion and he had Big Tiny Little on the piano. But I just saw Lawrence Welk sing Joanne Castle. What's the greatest lesson you learned from Lawrence? Well, one that comes right to my mind right away is be on time and know, know, know your craft and be prepared. And he was always, I mean, strict on that. We all know that. Be on time, know your craft, and don't underestimate your audience. You love your audience. Don't your you? audience, really, and and always take time for them because without them, I always feel, I feel terrible about these some of these stars that won't sign an autograph, and and, and after we work for them. I mean, without them, we don't have a job. And I'm just saying, you know, these people are kind enough. I know they come up to you when you're eating and things, but they're so thrilled they don't they don't realize, you know, that you do have a life, but still, and all they're fans and always treat them with respect and uh, don't underestimate them. Don't ever underestimate, and be on time. Well, we love you, Joanne. Well, I love doing this. <laughs> you have brought so much joy to so many people. I, we're so grateful. I hope I can continue. And we're so grateful to all of you for sharing your evening with us. So until next time, as Lawrence Welk always said, keep a song in your heart.